Hey out there, good morning. I hope you guys had an amazing weekend. It's Monday morning. I'm down at the brown house, the khaki house. Nothing's going on with this yet, no CO. It's kind of just sitting here, stagnant, vacant. So I would definitely say I am, in a, I, I am a real estate investor cheerleader, which means if you guys are on the fence about getting into real estate investing, <laughs> I am cheering you guys on. In my opinion, it's the best way to accumulate wealth, financial security, and other things. It's, it's just amazing, and I love it. At the same time, I'm being a cheerleader. I want to make sure I give you some of the things that happen that are kind of like stressful. In the brown house, khaki house, it's a little stressful. And the reason why is because the carrying costs on this house are $3,000 a month. That's the mortgage payment because I got the hard money loan on it. They still want their money. Now, I'm not going to say the time crunch is that stressful because I have a year with that loan. So we're not even close to that. So I'm not that stressed out about that. But after the year, I got to do something with this. So besides the mortgage payment, I still have to pay taxes. I have two different types of insurance policies on this house because it is a builder's risk policy, which means because it's vacant, it's a higher risk and I gotta pay more. Anyway, make a long story short, it's $3,000 a month to carry this house. That's $100 a day that this sits vacant. Ah! Without the CO, I can't do anything. As soon as I get a renter in here, then it's gonna offset that carrying cost and I'm in the process of refinancing the house anyway, so that $3,000 carrying costs even though I have to refinance it with this special type of lender with a higher interest rate, it's going to be significantly less. Let's say it's $2,100, $2,100 a month. Well, I'm going to get more than $2,100 for rent. So it will at least stop the bleeding. <laughs> It'll put a band-aid on the situation. Because <laughs> I'm not really able to get too much cash out of this because of how high the budget was. Anyway, so I was thinking this morning, real estate could be a little stressful, and it's probably one of the reasons why people don't want to get into it. The good stuff offsets the bad stuff. Absolutely. I was also thinking about something else. I was thinking, every stressful situation that I've had in my life, whether it's real estate related or life related or whatever, I've gotten through. So I have a 100% success rate of getting past anxiety and stress and bad days. I love those statistics, 100%, <laughs> but it doesn't feel that good while you're going through it. One of the ways I offset my stress is to listen to good stuff on YouTube and say some prayers and also be aware of the gratitude that I have in my life for doing this. After this, I'm going down to, uh, to the Kingsburg house because I have an inspection tomorrow, so I have to do some stuff. That uh, Kingsburg house is now moving along. And then, oh, also, I got one other, one other thing to tell you guys. I still love that kitchen. It came out beautiful. These little fans are not worth the money, in my opinion. That's not what I wanted to tell you about. I made a video the other day last week, and I said, you know, I should follow my own advice. And my own advice would be to somebody that's on the fence about whether or not to put an offer in on a house. My advice would be, commit. Make the offer, and then, the details, you take care of afterwards. I know that that's risky. It doesn't mean you're coming up with all cash and you're going to the bank and getting all the money and going to the seller and giving them all your money and that's that. It just means sign the offer. Get the offer out there, even if you don't know where the cash is coming from the buyer. <laughs> and you don't have all the other details worked out. So that would be the advice I give, right? So, so I wanna follow that advice. So. There's another house in Kingsburg slash Hazlitt that I mentioned the other day. They want 225,000. I looked into it. It's been on the market for like 60 days. There's somebody living in the house, but it needs renovations. I never got inside the house yet, but I did offer, um, I did make an offer yesterday. And I made an offer of how much? 170. So what's 170, that's $55,000 less than what he wants. I didn't really think he was gonna take it. And I thought maybe if he was gonna consider it, he'd come back to me in a few weeks. Here's the contributing factors. It needs a renovation. 
I have to get the certificate of occupancy. There's a tenant in there right now, makes it difficult to get in there. So I know that the seller has that against him. I also know that he's going for a 1031 exchange. What's a 1031 exchange you say? 1031 exchange is when you take an investment property that you're gonna sell and the profits that you're gonna make or all the cash that you're gonna make on an investment property, you're not gonna to touch it. You're gonna take that money and it's gonna go into a separate account. It has to be someone that does this. You take that money, you set it aside there, and you go and buy an, uh, another investment property with all of those funds, and guess what? Tax-free. So you don't have to pay any taxes on it. Because if you take all the money out, whatever profit you made on the house, if it's over a year, it's gonna be long-term capital gains, it's gonna be a 20%. If you had the house for less than a year, it could be as high as 35%. Anyway, make a long story short, he's got that going on. He's got a bunch of stuff going on. I also know that he only bought the house for 75, I think like five years ago. So there's some contributing factors in there. So I reached out to the person who was gonna show me the house and say, listen, I don't really need to see the inside of the house before we can start negotiating, negotiating an offer. Well, the seller, who's a realtor, who's done this before and has quite a few investment properties, he wrote to me and said, hey, what's your offer? Uh, because I have another one that I'm negotiating on right now. So I said, hey, listen, best of luck with that other offer. It's probably gonna be higher than mine. I'll offer 170. I'll get the certificate of occupancy. I'm easy to deal with. I could close fast, or I could close around your schedule. I see that you have a 1031 exchange, and I can go around your schedule, whatever's convenient for you. It's gonna be hard money as well as cash, and yada, yada, yada. Well, I thought he was gonna say, yeah, thank you, but no thanks. And then come back to me in a few weeks. Well, he didn't do that. He wrote back to me and he said, uh, Show me the proof of funds letter, and then we can negotiate. Sent him over the proof of funds letter. <clears throat> I, think he, I think he would take this offer, or possibly come up to 180 or so, which would still be a great deal. 10,000 square foot lot, Hazlitt. It's called West Kingsburg, but it's really Hazlitt. It would be a fantastic deal. But wait. <laughs> he sent over the stipulations about, I have to acknowledge that I have to get the certificate of occupancy uh, there's no contingencies on inspection or appraisal, which is fine. But this is the one that got me. I gotta leave the tenant in there. I thought about it. I thought about it a little bit more. I said, I can't do that. Not with this whole pandemic thing going on, the moratorium or everything else. How would I get that person out of there? Not like I wanna kick somebody out on the street, but how am I gonna do the renovations? Ah! So, I'm gonna write him back and say, listen, I could abide by all the stipulations you have in there, except the tenant, the tenant's gotta go. So, the next video I make, I'll let you know what he says.